Welcome to another episode of Talks for a Magical Monday, the weekly podcast of the Heralds of the Gospel. I'm your host, Brother Gustavo. For those who are not familiar with the Heralds, the Heralds of the Gospel are a community active in the Catholic Archdiocese of Toronto, as well as several other cities across Canada. Founded by Monsignor Jean Cladias, the Heralds comprise priests, religious, brothers and sisters, and lay people since their pontifical recognition in 2001 by Pope John Paul II. And for those who are familiar with the Heralds, this podcast features the talks following the Heralds' weekly rosary at St. Patrick's Parish in Schomburg, Ontario, where the brothers share some consoling and encouraging thoughts precisely geared to those dreaded beginnings of a probably hard week called Mondays. If you want to know more about the origin of the podcast, please stop right here. Go back and listen to episode number one. So even if today it's not Monday, but you're still commuting or doing chores, take heart brighten your perspectives and enjoy today's talk recorded at the Heralds of the Gospel House in Schomburg. The topic, pilgrims or settlers, hints and tips on how to keep focused on our spiritual life. Welcome then to Talks for a Magical Monday, the weekly podcast of the Heralds of the Gospel. Some time ago, we have been seeing the figure of the Good Shepherd and how the Good Shepherd reflects the capability and the love God has for each and every one of us because he, he has that desire to be with us like the Good Shepherd is ready to give his life for his flock, to be able to stay, to, to stay close to them and uh, no matter the different things they do that are wrong because the sheep get astray, the sheep, um, I don't know, get dirty, get to places that are dangerous, foolishly, and uh, at the same time they are careless and so on. The Good Shepherd is always ready to carry them in his shoulders, to go after them, to leave all the sheep behind and go and go to the rescue of these sheep that are astray. But this figure of the Good Shepherd, it's something that should fill us with confidence and with trust. Because this shepherd is not any shepherd, but is actually the Son of God. He's not just an earthly shepherd that is ready to do anything for his flock, but rather is the shepherd with capital S that is all-powerful, that is divine, and that is ready at any time to come after us in anything we need and to come at our rescue. But many times what we do is to lose our perspective on this. And we get distracted like sheep do. We get distracted, we forget our focus, we procrastinate, we simply lose our bearings, we are those who lose their spiritual goals with a f an easiness, with a, a tremendous carelessness. And that transforms us into somebody completely dangerous. <laughs> dangerous for ourselves, dangerous for our salvation, and many times dangerous for the sal to the salvation of others. So this is, this is what happens when we get cold, when we go lukewarm in our spiritual life. We lose the sight, we lose the goals, and we lose the aim at where we should get in order to save our souls. 
in order to be an agent of change in our life and in other lives. Because we are not alone in nothing. We are always, we have people who depend on us. We have people who are going to be looking at what we are doing because somehow they are going to inspire or justify their own lives by the examples or the anti-examples that we give. So this is very, very serious. Now, when it comes to focusing, I would like to share with you these writings of St. Gregory the Great, Pope. He is one of the luminaries in the history of the Church. He's one of those stars that illuminate the history of the Church to such an extent. And then he has this phrase, he says, anyone who is determined to reach his destination is not deterred by the roughness of the road that leads to it. Nor must we allow the charm of success to seduce us, or we shall be like a foolish traveler who is so distracted by the pleasant meadows through which he is passing that he forgets where he is going. <laughs> so, how he specifies, how he is able to explain how easy it is to forget where we are going. Anyone who is determined to reach his destination, determined to reach his destination. Are we those who are determined to get to heaven? Or we are just swerving in poetic dreams and in what we could call um, the, put it this way, hmm, the dollar store version of heaven, where we see these little clouds with fatty angels just hanging around. Is that our vision of heaven? Or we are determined to really get to heaven, to be able to see God face to face. What is us? So anyone who is determined to reach his destination, he says, is not deterred by the roughness of the road that leads to it. So if we were someone who is serious about going to heaven, if we were people who were really, really aiming at this, like people in the world are serious about setting up a business, starting a program, creating an app, writing a book. If we were as serious as they are on our destination to heaven, things would be completely different because we wouldn't be deterred by the roughness of the road that leads to heaven. Hmm. He continues, no, nor must we allow the charm of success to seduce us. Sometimes we think just because we said an extra rosary or just because we use nice words that we're already in heaven. No, not done yet. The charm of success may seduce us. But let us not forget that we are not in heaven yet. Let us not forget that those poetic, daydreaming ideas that sometimes we have have nothing to do with the roughness of the road that leads to heaven. So what do we have to do? Mm, number one, trust in Our Lady. But number two, we have to avoid being who? Here he says, we shall be like a foolish traveler if we fall into this. A foolish traveler who is so distracted by the pleasant meadows through which he is passing that he forgets where he is going. Those flourishing meadows could be, oh my goodness, could come in so many shapes, in so many forms. A pleasant meadow could be mediocrity, a pleasant meadow could be comfort. A pleasant meadow could be the illusion that effort is not necessary to practice virtue. A pleasant meadow could be that completely sugarly idea of sanctity 
that tells us, oh, don't worry, just say three Hail Marys and don't fight. Don't push yourself. Don't aim at your best version. Don't practice virtue so hard. Don't aim at self-control so much. If we do that, yes, we are losing. We forget where we are going. It is not Saint Gregory that says it is another saint. I can't recall at this moment, but he says that we have to remember that here on earth, we are pilgrims. We are not settlers. So no matter how comfortable our living room is, don't forget, salvation is not going to be brought to your living room by Amazon Prime. Your salvation is going to be gained, number one, by the grace of God, number two, by the intercession of Our Lady that you are going to ask day and night, but number three, by hard work, by endless nights, by waking up early, by working hard, by not procrastinating, but rather, but constantly transforming your life in what St. Bernard used to say. Life is a battle. And we are given every single tool that God can give us to attain our own salvation. But it depends on us. If we just let the pleasant meadows that St. Gre Saint, uh, Saint Gregory warns us about, if we only go in the pleasant meadows and we forget where we are going, we are going to be the foolish traveler that is so distracted that he lost his aim. So this is very, very, very important. And I repeat, anyone who is determined to reach his destination is not deterred by the roughness of the road that leads to it. Nor must we allow the charm of success to seduce us or we shall be like a foolish traveler who is so distracted by the pleasant meadows through which he is passing that he forgets where he is going. Very, very important. But don't forget, on our side, we have the Good Shepherd. On our side, we have the Good Shepherdess, Mary Most Holy, who is always ready to intercede for us. There, there are so many beautiful stories that talk about her readiness to fly at the help of those who invoke her. So let's be one of those who invoke Our Lady constantly. Because like any mother, mothers completely close their eyes to the defects of their children. Our Lady is not going to be complacent to our defects, but she is going to go over and beyond the defects we carry so that she can transform us, providing that we allow her. That's the only thing we need. So if we are going to be those who are going to be counted among the saints in heaven, we are going to be able to say when we reach there, it wasn't us, it was Our Lady. It was Our Lady who got me here, who picked, up, picked me up by my hand and brought me here. This is what I wish you. This is what myself <laughs> aims at. And let's pray and let's hope and let's constantly ask Our Lady that she guards us under her mantle constantly, completely, and until the last breath of our life. That will be that for tonight. And I leave you to rest well and again, hoping to see you soon. Salve Maria.
And this is all for today's episode recorded live at the Heralds of the Gospel House in Schomburg, Ontario. You can reach us anytime at one of the Heralds websites, such as heralds.ca forward slash podcast, new insights multimedia forward slash podcast, or you can also subscribe on iTunes or anywhere you normally listen to your favorite podcast. And as per now, pray hard, work hard, keep growing in devotion to the Eucharist and our Blessed Mother, evangelize by word and example, and be every day more and more a real herald of the gospel. Is it all